it's actually interesting to see here uh, when you consider the solution that the computer doesn't really find it that easily at first you you first have to give in the move and then everything starts to fall in place so that's that's also indicating how difficult it is to play such a move well this is a very very theoretical positional uh, decision uh, and I, I already gave something away in my introduction so I hope you didn't pay attention back then uh, the best move so the best move for hurt neck is to play knight takes f6 hurt neck sacrifices the two pieces against the rook and it is very strong because uh, one of the main factors when doing this so the main things to pay attention to are is white or is the side with the rook able to exchange the major pieces uh, who can sustain those uh, two pieces for black so in an, in an end game the rook is more often a lot faster in attacking weakness than the two pieces uh, which are actually better at attacking the king and creating uh, mating nets so when you're creating a mating net it's of course very useful to have a queen or another rook there and as we can see here if you calculate it right to the end the variation we, we will see that black has to exchange the the rooks and the queens and that way white will have a great end game left so white the the evaluation is white has a small advantage in the end game and uh, he can press for a win after knight takes f6 The variation that followed was rook takes f6, queen takes d8, rook takes d8, b4, knight a6, rook fd1, now threatening uh, a double attack on d7 after exchanging rooks. So black has to stay on the d file with his rook and it will be exchanged. Rook d3 trying to get a pass pawn. It's slightly in inaccurate. Rook d5 was to be preferred. a3, strong move, protecting the b4 pawn and completely putting the knight on a6 offside, thereby uh, guaranteeing the white advantage. King f7, rook takes d3, e takes d3, bishop takes f6, king takes f6 and now we can see that the end game has arisen in which the, the two pieces are coordinating poorly x moves are quite straightforward white plays king f2 black plays king f5 white plays rook c4 black has to play bishop e4 to protect the pawn on d3 and now white plays h3 the position is really falling apart for black the pieces are not coordinating especially the knight on h on a6 is does a terrible job it, it cannot join the game via c7 but it also has to cover c7 to not lose the a pawn and this is a very, very harsh situation for the young Magnus. But he, he manages to find a great way to escape with uh, a great style. Well, I was already uh, talking about uh, attacking the king with the two pieces. That's the best way to play. And even without queens or without rooks, extra rooks, Black still finds a way to orchestrate the pieces in an attack on the king, and this is this is one of the one of the most well for me. It's it's very beautiful to see how how Magnus does this, and he already does this when he's he's 12 years old. He he already finds this underlying positional idea of that's that's pretty impressive.
So in this position, why does threatening uh, g4 and trying to win the e4 bishop? So black has to play d2. And white will play rook d4. Uh, which actually frees the knight uh, to go to c7. Rook takes d2. And now... Black is already two pawns down, and it, it's starting to get serious. Knight d5, rook d4, keeping keeping a very tight grip on the on the pieces, and again threatening g4. So black has to go for knight f6. White goes b5. Uh, a good decision by Hertnek, uh, because. When you don't have a collar bishop, you have to put the pawns on the collar of the bishop. So you have to deprive him from those squares. As you can see, the bishop on e4, when it's maintained, it has a very good position. So white would actually wish to have a pawn on f3 here. And that would make the, the, the black position worse. So in a sense, white has... Uh, some kind of problems with these pieces gaining some strong support in the center. On the other hand, on the queen side, now with b5, a pawn on the light squares, he is getting problems with rook a4 coming, and the bishop and knight are not able to protect this pawn. Black plays bishop d5, making room for the knight on e4 to check the king and maybe generate some counterplay. Rook a4 going after the a pawn. Things seem to go downhill for from here for black. Black plays knight e4 check. King e1. Knight c5, which is a great practical decision. We, we could see that he could also take a pawn on, on g3 with the knight, but he, he tries to coordinate the knight and bishop in an attack against the king. That's the only thing Magnus is trying here now, and that's why he's actually trying to make his king help in this attack. So after rook takes a7, Magnus plays king e4. Well, the computer does not really approve to these moves. However, it's a very, very strong way to continue because it's it's a time trouble phase and it, it's really hard for uh, for a player to to play under pressure like this. So White is trying to prove something, but there's still an attack coming coming against this king. <coughs> Now, white is starting to uh, make mistakes. White had to play king f2, uh, but he, under, he probably underestimated Magnus, his counter chances, and he, he just went uh, for all the pawns. Rook g7 is a uh, serious mistake. King takes e3. Rook takes g6, and this this was this is a a point where Magnus plays bishop c4, but in in his early career it's it's quite strange to to actually see a Magnus who's not the very best at calculating lines, because instead of bishop c4, Black could have played uh, another move, which is Knight b3 check, which would have already ensured the draw. After, for example, king f1, bishop c4, king g1, knight e1, there's like this perpetual check net, which has been formed around the king, and white cannot escape this anymore. In the game, uh, something different happened after bishop c4, uh, White blundered again because he could run out of the 
for virtual check net with king d1 here. So he played rook takes b6. After rook takes b6, Wagner's played knight d3 here, and we can see black cannot escape the the drawing net here. Uh, for example, if he tries to go king d1, then that would be bishop b3 checkmate. Uh, seeing a successful attack against the king. So, Gerald Hurtneck played king f1, knight e5 check, king e1, and knight d3, which resulted in a draw after king f1 and knight e5 check. I was really impressed by the way Magnus was sacrificing all these pawns and finding the way in a uh, bad position like this. He did make some mistakes, but the underlying positional team uh, was powerfully executed. This is for me the conclusion of his early years. He makes few positional mistakes, but his calculation and visual skills are not fully developed yet. This is a, a great encouragement actually to teach positional principles to students at a very early age. Well, see you in the next video.